था वक्त जरूर आता है मैन डू गेट इरेक्शन पर कम वक्त वक्त पे नहीं आता वो पल भी आया तो कुछ पल के लिए सोचा उस पल को रोक लो और पल के लिए पर वो पल न रुका एक और पल के लिए दिस इज अचुएशन विच वी सी इन आर डे टू डे पेशेंट्स हु कम टू अस आई वॉज वेरी हैप्पी विद दी एंड 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 वेरी अमेज एट दी प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ डॉक्टर राका वी आर ऑल डिफरेंट दैट्स दैट्स ट्रूथ Sometimes we get annoyed with our partners. Sometimes we get annoyed with our children. We shouldn't do that because they are different. They cannot be same. No twins are the same. And one important thing in life we have to learn is we have to accept and adapt. Today we are all wearing masks. Three years back nobody was wearing masks. So we have accepted and we have adapted to the new situations. So in life we have to always accept whatever you get and adapt to whatever possible. solutions we have and there is nothing like a problem in life problem is only that we don't have yet the solution for it same is the case with the sexual dysfunctions which we have in this next 20 minutes i'm going to give you some nuggets of wisdom it's the day this is one of the most common male sexual dysfunction but today we have got so many things to give to our patients that this symptom of erectile dysfunction is now a erectile dysfunction with with pranams to god and thanks to my teachers dr op kapoor dr prakash kothari and dr sashank joshi i beseech them to bless me always i really have no conflicts of interest when we think of diabetes and sexuality it is this is a very recent paper and says that the erectile dysfunction occurs as one of the first symptoms in women men who have diabetes and we diabetologist or endocrinologist or any physician should think about it and ask about this symptom every patient who is about 30 who have a history or family history of metabolic syndrome because it's proven beyond doubt that erectile dysfunction is the earliest marker of myocardial ischemia and if you are detecting this as early as possible as even the first time when the patient got it and if it is organic you can you have a window period of at least 3 to 5 years of time where you can change his lifestyle convince him counsel him and retard the onset of critical events like myocardial infarction and strokes in his life It, it, the perspective is not just type one or type both have equal uh, or in fact type one diabetics have more sexual dysfunctions. Every male has certain those. Not only males but females also. Enough studies to prove that in diabetic women we have seen yet till now. See how the world is partial. How the pharma companies are partial and biased towards the genetic things. to the genes or to the males or to the genders we have got over 1500 molecules for male sexual dysfunctions but for female sexual dysfunctions we hardly have anything and there are no guidelines how to manage female sexual dysfunctions a meta analysis of 43 studies with 84 180 patients post menopausal patients and they found that they all have some or the other problem most common were hyperactive sexual desire disorders and most of them had depression which was very common and they didn't prefer pharmacotherapy they preferred behaviors of their husbands towards them or their partners towards them as the best therapy to them and there is definitely a link between diabetes and sexual obesity high blood pressure sleep apnea depression are common conditions which we see with diabetics and the time and energy spent mean managing diabetes and related conditions can take a toll on emotional health which can again produce this interest in sex changes in testosterone or estrogen because of diabetes menopause or conquering conditions can impact libido lubrication and ability to become sexually aroused diabetes impacts the blood flow because the relaxation in the penile cavernous muscles is affected and that or even in women there is dryness and having high levels of glucose can damage the nerves autonomic neuropathy we know so these are all the things that definitely link what is more interesting to understand this is a schematic diagram of a penile corpora cavernosa smooth muscle cell and this is the vascular endothelium 
Vascular endothelium, if it is normal, produces endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, which potentiates the nitric oxide. Friends, remember, nitric oxide is the main chemical signaling molecule. It's the currency of the cell. It's the miracle molecule, which enters into the corpora cavernosa muscle cell, converts GTP into cyclic GMP. This cyclic GMP relaxes the smooth muscles of the penile corpora cavernosa and allows the blood to come inside. But sadly, this cyclic GMP also hydrolyzes into 5-GMP with the help of an enzyme called PDE5 or phosphodiesterase 5. So if at all you look at the quality point of view, all you need is good endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, which you can get only before endothelium is normal. So that's why erectile dysfunction is nothing but an endothelial dysfunction at the core of it. Then you need nitric oxide, you need cyclic GMP, you need something to block this PDE5. So cyclic GMP remains there in more bioavailable form. And we have today PDE5 inhibitors in the form of sildenafil, tadalafil, eudenafil, verdenafil, and new kid in the block is avanafil. But when you look at diabetes, Hyperglycemia, we all know there is advanced glycated end products which increase and there is oxidative stress. Ultimately, all lead to cavernosal endothelial dysfunction and there are functional and structural alteration in the penile architecture leading to erectile dysfunction. So, erectile dysfunction and endothelial dysfunction in type 2 diabetes, there is definitely a link. In a patient who has got diabetes, his corpora cavernosa, because of increased age and increased ROS, leads to so many changes in the muscles which reduces the nitric oxide and there is apoptosis. And simultaneously, we have found all diabetic to be hypogonad. Their testosterone is also less. So, reduced testosterone again adds to the uh, smooth muscle con relaxation and ultimately all lead to erectile failure. The risk factors, we call aging, oh, we are all aging, so we are going to get erectile. No, it's not so. Hypertension, diabetes, all these are aging risk factors, including which can result in cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction. And ultimately, endothelial dysfunction is the main base for it. And in fact, erectile dysfunction can be considered as a prognostic marker or a risk factor for either of it. When we call aging, what happens in aging? Ultimately, everything is reactive oxygen species that increase in the oxidative stress and reduction in nitric oxide leading to endothelial dysfunction, again leading to vascular. So, if we are going to age, is life itself a disease? No, it's not a disease. I can't call life. We are not diseased. We, we have something which is going on in our body and that is progressive increase in the pro-inflammatory status which we are all in. That is aging. And this is controlled by a network of molecular defense mechanisms and immunosenescence which is there has to be proper because most of the diseases what we get due to various pathways ultimately lead to inflammation or inflammation in the body. And friends, diabetes is an inflammaging disease. COVID we saw again patients in COVID had endothelial dysfunction, had the erectile dysfunction. It is not a COVID was not a sexually transmitted infection, but it had it had shown reduction in the sex life of the patient and enough studies to prove that there is a complex bidirectional relationship because SARS receptor aged angiotensin 1 converting enzyme type 2 was expressed in human pancreatic beta cells and this was upregulated by the inflammatory process of the state in which the patients were in. So, Sexual dysfunctions, be it in male or a female, affects the individual and the partner and there is definitely a dent in the relationship. So what's new we found? We found patients don't talk about it. One simple question if you ask in your patient's history, which you take so long, ask them that do you have problems in making love? It's not a vulgar thing. And you will be surprised that your patients are waiting for you to initiate a dialogue on this aspect. Across the globe, only 4% of Indian doctors are asking about it. So, Dr. John Malal from Sloan Kettering developed a beautiful algorithm for identifying or, ask, or teaching the doctors how to go about it. First, ask your patients that do you have problems, then legitimize the problem. Suppose he's a diabetic, tell you most of the diabetics have these issues in the bedroom and if you have any issues, there are solutions to it, please tell us. So, if he, he may not tell you at that 
time. But when he comes next time, he will remember and if he has a problem, he will definitely talk to you. And if he tells you, if you do not find any solution for that, you can refer. But if you know how to manage it, which after this lecture you will all know, open up a further discussion and evaluate and work together with a team of doctors and give him a comprehensive treatment. It's really prevalent in India and China. I call Chindya are the diabetes capital of the world. And erectile dysfunction is the commonest complications of diabetes. And so Chindya are the erectile dysfunction capital of the world. But all physicians who want to treat erectile dysfunctions, and not especially in diabetic, what they need today is education. Dr. Bansi beautifully today morning also said this. And we have certain markers, you know. Even if you don't ask your patients, you look at him and you just look at certain reports, you can diagnose erectile dysfunctions. Look at the gums. If you find the gums are swollen, periodontitis, it's a marker of erectile dysfunction. Through and beyond doubt. Look, salivary tumor necrosis factor, it costs only 50 rupees. Just take a biopsy, just take a swab and give it on the lab. You'll find this necrosis factor there and you can diagnose the severity of erectile dysfunctions. Vitamin D deficiency, proven beyond doubt that it can cause erectile dysfunction in, 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 in men. So relationship between platelet and lymphocytes, very important. Do a CBC. If the total platelet count and total lymphocyte count of your patient is 104, he has got no erectile dysfunction. But if it is more than that, he has got mild. If it is more than 116, he has got moderate. And if it is more than 136, he has got severe erectile dysfunction. Who doesn't do CBC? Which is a simple report. Take a CBC report, do a mental calculation and then confront with your patients and tell him, I think you may be having this issue. He will call you Sai Baba, hey, doctor, how did you know it? I have not told you this. So, so this is very important. And again, neutrophil lymphocyte ratio also is another marker for it. NLR, proven beyond doubt that if it is more than three, your patient has severe erectile dysfunction. And we have a beautiful new study with endothelin-1. Endothelin-1 estimation is nothing but it tells you about the status of atherosclerosis in the smaller arteries. So, estimation of endothelin in one called as endocan has been proven to be identifying or a diagnostic of erectile dysfunction also. All diabetics are testosterone deficient. If testosterone deficiency after 40, 50, 60, if you find, and if he has got decreased libido, etc., and diabetes, definitely. Many youngsters do they go for hair growth and they don't want the hair to fall. They they, they want big hairs and exit. So they use finasteride. Finasteride is again known to cause erectile dysfunction. Youngsters today are watching porn much before they enter into their first sexual act or before marriages. And they all watch so much of aggression in the porn that those images and videos are imbibed in, are imprinted in their minds and that is what they feel is normal. And when they get married, they don't get that arousal from their partners and they develop erectile dysfunction, the arousal is delayed, there is no satisfaction and this is not treated with PD-5 inhibitors. They need psychotherapy. So, prawn induced erectile dysfunctions. Smoking in women and men is so common today. Again, that gives rise. So, sleep disorders. We are all sleep deprived. We did a study in Hinduja hospital of all doctors. All doctors were sleep deprived. They had less testosterone. The other other manifestations like obstructive sleep, apnea, insomnia, shift work disorders, restless leg syndrome, narcolepsy are all other sleep disorders which can affect the sexualism. I work for Bombay Police and I look at the belts of them. If the dropping belt, if you could see in the same person, is again a sign of uh, erectile dysfunctions. And there is a strong relation between erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease. Any patient who comes to you with erectile dysfunction has got subclinical cardiovascular disease proven beyond diet. So, the, the real world studies, what they say, that erectile dysfunction, diabetes, cardiovascular disease and depression has to be treated together. So, how do we manage erectile dysfunction? We all know he inside, she, man inside, woman. The point I want to make here is, that the problem may be with the male or a female, but the solution always will be in the couple. He may be, she may be having menopause, he may be endopause, but during sexual dysfunction, it is couple pause. So, couples should be counseled together. How do we treat erectile dysfunctions? We have three modalities, oral drugs, along with counseling and lifestyle measures to be followed. Second is injection of papaverine counseling and lifestyle measures. Third is vacuum therapy, intraurethral prostaglandin. And if all these fail, we send our patients to uh, surgeons, androsurgeons who put in implants or anastomotic surgery or stenting, etc. So the process of care today, we look at this, that lifestyle changes 
may be accompanied as the first line therapy for any sexual dysfunction, especially in uh, in males. We have four PD-5 inhibitors. The fastest was Valdenafil, which is shortly not available today. There were a lot of side effects and contraindications. The only, only contraindications which you should remember is nitrates. If he is on nitrates, please don't give them because he may develop uh, hypotensions. But today, after 17 years of clinical experience, we have found that these PD-5 inhibitors are not a cutting-edge pharmaceutical solutions. We are living in a multi-drug era and choices and physicians are opted. So we have found patients not responding to it. So, what do we do? The best of all the PD-5 inhibitors is one of them is Tadalafil. Because low dose Tadalafil, what does it do? It increases the CGMP, it increases the dilatation of the blood vessels, it increases the thromboresistance, increases the CPK, increases the smooth muscle cell inhibition of relaxation and it is an anti-inflammatory. Friends, Tadalafil is known not only to give you erections but also improves the prostatic physiology like uh, enlargement etc. Also improves this, the lower urinary tract symptom and more important than that, it is also known to improve the endothelial dysfunctions. So be, studies beyond doubt have proven that if you give your patients 12 weeks of Tadalafil, 5 mg or 10 mg or even 2.5 mg, whatever be the HbA1c, whatever be his blood pressure, prostatic hypertrophy or even dyslipidia, they all improved in their sexual dysfunction. My friend Dr. Uh, Jyoti Dev gave these patients insulin pump and 84% of diabetics improved in their sexual dysfunctions. Metformin is a wonder drug. It's a beautiful drug. I tell you, you must give metformin to all your diabetic patients. It improves the endothelial dysfunction. FGLT2 inhibitors, by its class effect, it reduces weight, reduces hyperglycemia, reduces hypertension, it's an antioxidant also. All these causes, all these factors are vasculogenic causes of erectile dysfunction. And if you give them metformin and SGLT2 inhibitors, you are covering all the vasculogenic causes of erectile dysfunction. And these patients don't need an additional pill burden of taking PD-5 inhibitors. They start getting their sexual functions becoming normal. Buried penis syndrome, so commonly we see the penises are almost buried in the suprapubic fat. Give them one gram of uh, one gram of metformin, L-arginine gel to apply and uh, cesane seed oil which has got androgenic properties.